Anyone want to go for a swim? Uh, maybe not. Marlin here. Welcome. Today I have a fun tutorial showing you how to create your very own stencils using your own designs on your silhouette. And on Friday, we're actually going to use those stencils to execute a cookie project. But for today, we're behind the computer. And here is the silhouette in action. The blade there on the left is doing the work on a piece of clear acetate and it's cutting exactly the lines that we're going to be designing today. Before I bought the silhouette I did read some reviews. I was torn between the Cricut and the silhouette. One of the most consistent things that I read about the silhouette studio was that this program is tricky to use and the thing that I've concluded after actually using it is that this is not a graphics program. This program is to facilitate using the machine it's not really to tweak your your drawings really easily and so if you want to edit your pictures use a photo editing kind of like a Photoshop type thing not the Silhouette Studio bring your completed images into Silhouette and you'll be able to cut them super easily now I'm in Pixelmator which is like a junior Photoshop it's a little bit easier if you're not it's got a lot of features Photoshop and so it's tricky to learn this is got a little bit less capabilities and therefore a little bit more user friendly in my opinion and so here's my bunny when uh, I draw a design I usually trace out the cutter that's the red line here's the yellow line the yellow line is cookie space and so the icing is going to start where the white is I also don't usually draw both sides simply because like what's the point I need it to be symmetrical I don't waste my time I only draw half and then I can copy paste and flip it over and I'm going to get a perfectly symmetrical design. Here I really darkened out my lines with a black marker. The first thing you need to do though you need to add these little white sections so that the stencil holds together. And then once you've got that then you can add a mirror image of the design and you're going to have a perfectly as you can see symmetrical face. Now this here is a little bit wide so we're just going to fix that and there we're left with a really cute little bunny stencil and because of all the little sections everything's going to hold perfectly together you'll find this on patreon with two other versions actually for this Wilton head cutter and now I'm in Adobe Illustrator I know there's other programs that do this easier ones but this is the one I like and I've dragged my drawing in and if we zoom in you can see the lines are rough this is a hand-drawn picture and so what I do is I select it and then I go an object image trace make and we're going to zoom in again now did you see the red went away and all that let's zoom in and you see the lines are just so much cleaner I didn't, uh, this is not the version with the white sections cut out, but it's just to show you what the illustrator does. And it just helps the silhouette when you put it in, the silhouette really knows where to cut. It's not kind of confused. So I like this step. Here is the completed set. I formatted my stencil. I know usually everybody does it six inch, but who says that has to be the way that it is? This is a eight and a half by 11 and you know what I didn't do it I already have this cut as I'm talking now I should have cut holes so that I could put this in a binder and maybe I'll do that with my hole punch but you can add some three holes there and you can just put these in a binder because that's the other tricky thing with the six inch stencils where do you put them I have them all over the place you have to buy an album another thing you have to spend money on we all have leftover binders from our kids going to school these are three options you'll find this on patreon in jpeg for you cricut users and it's in the silhouette format for those of you who do have a silhouette and now we're going to look at making a houndstooth stencil the kind of more like basic stencil process now i'm doing a google image search for a, a free houndstooth stencil and I came upon this one here by Jeff Bertrand and here he has some freebies and we click patterns you see he has several and but this is the one I like because you see there's white 
So let's open that up. And you see here the white, that's what we need so that the stencil holds together. So I'm saving that and I'm going to use that. I've got this 12 by 12. I'm actually going to cut the stencil 6 by 6, but I like to work a little bit bigger. And now I created a white one inch border, which will be half an inch once it's cut, since this is going to be half the size. And I'm dragging in that houndstooth pattern. Here it is. And all I'm doing is I'm repeating it. Here you can see, so I'm gonna hide this one. I'm repeating it, lining them up, repeating, and then I've grouped them and I can just press duplicate and I'm left with another row. Now we should zoom in just to make sure we line them up well so that it's perfectly lined up and the pattern will look right. And we're going to duplicate again. Let's go smaller so we can see. There again, you see, we need to place it right there. So let's zoom in to see if we're good. We're good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to group these three rows, group, and I'm going to duplicate these three. It'll just make it a little bit faster and then I can move them. Again, let's zoom in so that we're positioned at the right spot. There. Okay, all good. And now, I've let's zoom out so we can see it. So you see, we have a bit too much, but it's behind and we can't even see it. So this is the stencil and I'm gonna put a white background behind, and there it is. And now let's export it. Now I'm in my Silhouette Studio, and I've got that stencil that I created. I'm dragging it in, and it's too big here. Let me just shrink that so I can adjust the size. I'm going to make it 12 inches, the size of the, of the mat just so we can see on the computer here. So let's adjust the size, 12 by 12. 12, okay. And let's center it, just a bit smaller. All right, there it is. Now we're going to select the trace area. You see it's selecting all this yellow now let's zoom in there and here threshold and despeckle so if we move that you see it kind of like selects the white area a little bit more if you go too high however you see it it goes a little bit too much out so we're gonna go about to here and then we'll do trace and now when we delete the background look at our sharp corners if I didn't do that step it would have been kind of rounded and now let's let's zoom out there's the stencil now if I select it and I want it to be six inches okay let's first of all let's do a six inch cut line five there's six and six there and we're going to oh, I'm more one two three oh I'm a little bit too long there there's the six and now I'm taking this and I'm let's zoom in again I'm at the half inch right here and I'm just going to put that so that I have a half inch border all around that stencil you see right there I'm left let's zoom in I'm left here with half an inch kind of perimeter. Now if I zoom in, I don't think that these little shapes will really add much to my, to my stencil. So if you want, you can go in and delete these. I cleaned up all the little bits there around the edge and so my stencil's ready to cut. 
I'm going to save it first. You'll find it on Patreon if you want to have a chevron stencil to cut with your silhouette. No, what am I saying? Chevron, it's a hound's tooth. Six inch stencil. Now that I showed you how to make kind of like a regular stencil, this is the one that I drew and scanned and kind of tweaked to get it more polished. And now we're going to cut this one as well. So let's select the whole thing and then trace and let's remove the back and let's zoom in and inspect. Now this is the little bow. We can see we have the little white bits holding the smile, whiskers, stitches, little lashes, the stitches all around the head, all good this guy here, a cut in between the teeth, eyes, this will be the little hair or head flower wreath, flowers if you want them, this is the coloring inside the ears, this is the coloring inside the this bunny's ears, this is the coloring for the bow, and here's a whole bunny, little feet, and here we have, if you want to airbrush first, the color. So let's zoom back out and there is the completed stencil. We can position that where we're going to cut. The sheet is eight and a half by 11, so I can kind of format. From here to here, my cutter is two and a quarter, so I don't want it to be more than two inches. So one and two. Oh yeah, that's good. Right here, one, two, that's good. Here again, Let's just check at this point, one. Oh, that's plenty. So you should always double check before you cut because then you're just gonna waste material. So we're going to cut these two stencils. After all this designing and stencil making, I'm pooped, I'm not making cookies today. I'll decorate another day and film that for you guys. But for right now, I wanted to try it out. So I used my silhouette to cut some cookie shapes and airbrushed on there and you get the gist of the design right there. So we'll be decorating in a future video, but if you want the lines now, I'm sure you can figure it out. Um, that'll be on my Patreon if you want to test out the stencils yourself. I hope I wasn't too all over the place with regards to the computer programs. At the end of the day, you're going to have to muscle through it if you're not that familiar yet with these programs. You're just going to have to figure it out how to scan and do all that if you want to use your own designs. Another great way is if you have an, uh, an iPad, the, the new version you can draw right on the screen. That would probably make your life easier. I don't have that piece of equipment. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future uploads. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, and I'll see you next time.